second and in. Well, Karen Keelt set it up for McInerney, and with that turn and spin, she left two defenders in her wake, and once she got free, there was only one place the ball was going, Katie McInerney, or Katie McCauley, if you prefer, the hat-trick hero from the Ulster final, and they've got two goals. Remember, they've averaged three a game in this year's championship, and they've got two as we head towards half-time, and just wiping out the boost that Galway had from their own goal from Maria Breheny just seconds before and again the bounce was dangerous and tricky for Roshan Kalnan to deal with it's gone wide 2-8 to 1-5 Derry with the breeze in a strong position again and John A Mullen their manager well a little happier now happier than he was a, a, about two minutes ago anyway they've answered that goal and in, in, uh, over the course of the game like they do deserve to be that much in front but it just shows what can happen in, in any kind of a game of hurling Sinead Cassidy firing that in again. It was uh, Una Bradley just lurking around the back as the ball was played forward. Elaine O'Sullivan playing out at wing forward despite the 15 on her back. Ailish O'Reilly of Galway. Very congested and Ephraim Ikashida able to clear for Derry. There's a foul by Karen Keelt on Colette Gill. Gill fires that up to the corner to Maria Breheny. Derry they just can't let her get the ball on her stick, which they have let her do. That leaves Maeve Quinn behind again. Breheny was hooked very well, and now it's Elaine O'Sullivan. Scrap for possession. It's been a scrappy period of play, but Eilish Nikashide has uh, collided with a Galway player who's gone down injured. Emma Kilkenny has uh, been... Badly hurt, it appears, in that collision with uh, Eilish Nikashida. Yeah, she went in here to block down and missed the hurl, hurl missed, missed the four hurl. She took the full rapid uh, into the face, like in the guard. It's her own hurl, she actually missed the block. It's what you'll be doing in coach, and you block the hurl, you get down your stick on the stick, but she actually missed the stick of Eilish Nikashida, and she suffered with it. But Jero Dowd from Limerick, the referee was very close to it just as the uh, collision took place, and he called for the medic straight away. Of Tony Ward, the position that he was in, and it looks as if they're going to bring Rachel Monaghan in as well, Cyril. Yeah, she's a top player, very, very good player, like from the Mullet Club. This, this one is very good forward, but like uh, there isn't that much going into the forwards there. That's the problem. Like, like Deirdre Buck is out on middle of the field, and so is Lena Sullivan. You'll find if they get ball in that they are dangerous, but like so are Derry up the other end. It's, it's funny, both sets of forwards look very, very good. Well, a stretcher has been called for. Just, uh, well, I don't think it's going to be needed. And thankfully, uh, Emma Kilkelly is back to her feet. Yeah, Dara, they made the stern stuff back in Kinvara. Like, I know it looked bad, but like, it was a complete accident. She just took the full set. Yeah. Kind of on her helmet the whole lot, but she'll, she'll play on. So, Gerard Dad will throw the ball in to restart this All Ireland intermediate final. Elishney Kashida couldn't pick the ball one handed. Maria Breheny in there again, Emma Kilkelly back straight away involved in the play, possibilities for Galway here now, it's Cormican, Cormican bearing down on goal and getting her goal, Katrina Cormican, you said she wouldn't weaken the team, yeah, and she's, she's got a goal. She's a good player, I've seen her playing club for a club, Cathy Tackle, she's good and she does a lot of work, she kind of worked for midfield in the whole time, that brings Galway back into the game, again, they're, they're lucky, Galway are kind of lucky to only kind of three down there with the, with the breeze that they're playing against, and, and Derry have been well on top for most of the first half, that's the way the game goes. But there will be some doubt certainly in the Derry minds after conceding that goal again their defence just cut open the defence which before today had only conceded 31 points a total of in four championship games and Galway have been in for 2-5 already playing against the breeze yeah Galway will be happy if they can win a few just two, three or four points on half time and this is a free for them again like so they're right in this game two minutes to be added on at the end of the first half Galway with a, a free just inside their own half and here comes Rachel Monaghan of Galway there was some surprise that she was uh, left out of the starting 15 in the first place but a very high class substitute to be able to call on and that's what Tony Ward has done player going off is Sinead Keane so Galway are going to reorganize things a little I think Clodagh McGrath has gone to mark Karen Keelt in the Galway half back line. Free taken by Sarah Noon. And the referee spotted 
an infringement, so Galway with a free in. Emma Kilkelly has the ball in her hand. She will take the free, and uh, Galway could be even closer as we enter the first minute or head towards the second minute of additional time. Yeah, Darius, you should score this. Like, she should be quite good. She should be very comfortable taking these, and you have Ruth Mana, or Rachel Manahan now as well, but Emma still takes and should tap it over. And Emma Kilkenny has done that for Galway, and just two points between them. At certain times during this first half, it seemed as if Derry were just going to cut loose and build up such a huge margin that Galway wouldn't be able to get back, but those two late Galway goals have brought them right back into this All-Ireland final. They will have the wind in their backs in the second half. Derry leading by two, but the way Galway have played over the last five, six minutes, it doesn't feel that way. Aileen McCusker getting help from Eilish Nikoshida, who fires that forward. The danger players again in the Derry full forward line. McGoldrick, Bradley, McEnany. McEnany's got a goal already. Now Tara Kenny. Again, that pressure comes on the Galway defence, and that one, well, it was a little aimless. Sinead Cassidy picks it up for Derry fires it into the corner over the head of Una Bradley. Lorraine Farrell getting there first for Galway. The right half back, pulled on first time though by Bradley. Sarah Noon sweeping up and clearing for Galway and the ball gone out of play over on the far side. Still two points between them and the two minutes of additional time are up. And Tony Ward, his team behind, but he'll be a lot happier with the way this Galway team have pushed on as we've headed towards half-time. The cut taken by Gráinne McNichol straight to Sarah Noon, and Noon clears, and there goes the whistle for the end of the first half. Derry, at various times during that first half, really threatened to cut loose. They looked lethal in front of goal. They got two goals, they've had three in each of their last four games, but Tony Ward's team have dug deep, very deep. Two late goals have brought them right back into this game. They will have the aid of a strong breeze in the second half, but it's Derry who lead at half-time in the intermediate All-Ireland final by 2-8 to Galway's 2-6. Back after the break. You were looking at shots of the flags around Croke Park, and well, even during the halftime interval, it seemed to change direction several times, kind of swirling around the bowl here in uh, Croke Park. If anything, it is certainly, uh, well, it's helping Galway more than it's helping Derry, but again, looking at flags in different parts of the pitch, they appear to be blowing in completely uh, different directions, looking down at the flags in front of us as the second half gets underway underneath the Cusick stand, those flags blowing down towards the canal end, so they would indicate that it's helping Derry. But uh, we shall keep a watch on it. It's swirling around anyway. The condi playing conditions not easy for either team. That's the most neutral thing we can say. Derry leading by two points. They have a free right on halfway with Gráinne McGoldrick. Keeping that low. Galway not dealing with that at all well, and it's put wide by Gráinne McNichol. Well, it seemed to go well wide, it's been flagged though as a point. And you can see Roshin Kalman making the case to the uh, umpire. What did you think, Cyril? I thought from where I was here, I was shooting as wide. Have a look at, another look at it here. Yeah, it's well yeah. wide, no doubt about that. Well, it's been chalked up as a point, and Derry lead by three. If there's a point between the two sides at the end of this game, we will have a talking point, and that appears to be definitely wide, but Derry 2-9 to 2-6, and Gráinne McNichol credited with the point for Derry. Another one from play, 2-8 of their 2-9 from play, even if you have to put a, a little asterisk behind that last point that we've seen. Maeve McGoldrick went across towards that, Rachel Monaghan. A Galway sharpshooter out for that and winning the free. Yeah, this Rachel Monaghan now, Darius, he's a very top, very good underage player in Galway, highly, highly rated. And Here's the point again. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, this goes well right at the post as we look at it, it's, it's gone wide. And the reaction of the keeper as well, and just absolute uh, shock and surprise. Derry are going to make a change, Maria Mooney is going to come in as that free is fired over. 
by it was Rachel Monaghan who took it actually yeah yeah it's a good free she, she's a natural free take as well and she won't again she won't weaken the team Galway would have a lot of good young players up front kind of very talented forwards of minor titles and under 16s yeah underage success in both counties in recent years Derry attacking and it's Katie McEnany one of their goal scorers from the first half some fencing going on as that Sinead Cassidy attempts to bend and pick the ball. Sarah Noon is across too for Galway. And then Una Bradley just kicking it forward, trying to get it away from that cluster of players. Sarah Noon there was Noon pushed. He's ended up on the ground anyway. Emma Kilkelly getting stuck in for Galway. Aileen McCusker letting the ball off to Karen Keel, scored three points in the first half for Derry. Nice sidestep, good feet from Karen Keel, and great determination too. Ran into a maroon wall, and Roshin Kalnam with the mistake, but able to scramble the ball away. The danger's still not clear from a Galway point of view. And the full-back line in a bit of a muddle at the minute as Tara Kenny gets across. Pressure put on her by Katie McEnany, and Galway unable to clear their lines in a significant way here's Sinead Cassidy options across the 20 meter line Cassidy backs herself goes for the point good bat away by Roisin Kalnan now Paula Kenny for Galway and really fine play there's a foul in there as well it'll be a free in to Derry it appears from the referee's signal Galway their backs to the wall big style right there Derry gonna make a substitution player going off is 17-year-old Maeve Quinn, the right cornerback, and that's Maria Mooney, another player from the All-Ireland Intermediate Club Champions, Owen Rua. Karen Keel standing over the free for Derry on the 20-metre line, takes the point, and that will most definitely over the bar, three-point game. Back in play, Roshin Kalnan's puck out. Cleared forward by Tara Kenny of Galway. Deirdre Burke. Elaine O'Sullivan across trying to get to that, but Aileen McCusker in pole position for Derry, the right half back. Played at midfield earlier in the season, remember. Here's Gronia McGoldrick, open road in front of Gronia McGoldrick. Pucks the ball into the corner, possibilities for Derry. Shauna Quinn scored a point in the first half. Quinn closed down by Colette Gill, who's been at her shoulder all the way through this intermediate final, but that one has gone wide. Derry's fifth wide, first of the second half, still a three-point lead for the Ulster champions. Yeah, that angle was very tight there to go for a score from that angle. Better off squaring the ball back out. Galway didn't tuck a single wide during the first half. Roisin Kalnan has been the busier of the two goalkeepers since this match restarted. Maria Mooney wearing 27 trying to get involved for Derry. Karen Kilt has been involved all the way through this game, but it's a line ball to Galway. Clodagh McGrath started the match at midfield, but now at left half back since Aoife Linsky went off injured. Out in front was Maeve McGoldrick, and here is McGoldrick. Her sister Gronje playing Sean Leo and Barry, her brothers, as well as uh, many other members of their family here today. There's a, a push in the back there, and Galway with a free. forward and the wind seemed to just grab it at the vital time. No doubt about uh, Dara, the breeze has turned round as with Derry again in the second half. It's fairly strong, that feet are very sharp. And it is swirling around, but Derry had the assistance of that breeze in the first half and they have it again in the second half and they lead by three. They've a line ball too, which Gronje